Hello, my name is Dorinda, and today I'm going to talk to you about using Microsoft Web Matrix. Um, this is a development tool that you can use to create, publish, and maintain your own website. As it is a Microsoft product, it does kind of have that feel of front page and Visual Studio. So if you've worked with either one of those before in the past, you should be relatively comfortable with Web Matrix. Okay. To begin, first of all, obviously you're going to need the program on your computer. If you don't already have it installed, you can find it at Microsoft's website. Just go to this address, click this free download button, follow the directions, and it should download relatively quickly and easily onto your machine. Once it has downloaded, you can find it under Start All Programs, and it should be listed with any Microsoft products you already have on your computer. Just click right here and it should open to this page right here. Now if you don't want it to open to this page each and every time, make sure to check this box. That way the next time it opens, it will open to the editor instead of this page. Okay, to begin a site from the beginning, you have the choice of either going to templates, and as you can see they have various templates for ASP.NET, PHP, node.js and html. If however you decide that you don't want to use either one of these templates you can come over here to the app gallery. And in the app gallery Web Matrix gives you the choice of downloading any of these CMS's. Just select the CMS of your choice and Web Matrix will install everything you need to run it. Today we're just going to look at how to create a, a couple of easy sites. First we're going to choose the ASP.NET empty site. So just click right there, come down here and give it a name. Click next and it's going to install everything that you need for this template to create a site. Now what I like to do first is come to the URL, control and click it. That way it will open up a page in my web browser so I can see what it looks like from the very beginning. Obviously there's nothing on this page because we chose the empty site. So it's up to us to put a little something onto the page. So come over here to files and this opens up the editor completely. Now as I said earlier it does kind of have the feel of Visual Studio and if you worked with Visual, Visual Studio you would notice that this toolbar up here looks suspiciously familiar. And actually it gives you the option of installing Visual Studio Express if you choose to work with that instead. Okay, so to add a little something to the page we're going to come over here to the default.cshtml. We're going to double click that and this is the home page of our site. So first we're just going to change the title and this is what's going to be displayed in the tab of the web browser. Okay, now we're going to add a little something to the page. So let's say you want a header. And let's say you want to add some text. Okay, that's it. So now we're going to go over here to run. Now if you click above this line, the compiler is going to compile and run your page in whatever your default web browser is. But say you have more than one web browser, you can come here at this little arrow underneath run, click that and it will give you the choice of opening your page in any of these web browsers that you have installed. As you can see I have Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome so I could choose either one of these. It also gives you the option of downloading a, and installing a Windows Phone 7 simulator so you can see what your page will look like on a Windows mobile device. Now say you have more than one web browser and you want to open your page in all of them to 
get a good feel for it, you can come down here to Open in All, and it'll open your page in each web browser installed on your machine. I'm just going to open it in Firefox. Okay, so this is what the site looks like now. There's a different title in the tab. It went from My Site's title to Dorinda's site. And there's a heading, Hello, and some text. This is my page. So this is what the page looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. And that's pretty much the gist of adding stuff to your empty site. The empty template is just that it's empty. So you are going to be required to build your page completely from scratch, but to your liking. Now if you don't have time to build a page completely from scratch, you can choose one of the templates that has functionality already built into it. So now I'm going to show you one of those templates. We're going to go to File, New, Site from Temp Gallery, and we're going to choose the personal site. We're going to give it a name. and hit next. Once again it's downloading everything that you need for this template to run. Okay, we're going to go to the URL again and we're going to click. Come over here and this is what the site looks like from the beginning. As you can see there's a lot more going on than it was with the empty site. So now let's go back to the editor and we're going to change a couple of things. So go down here to Files. Now the default page here is the main page of your website again. Again, So we can change something in here. Once again, this is the title that's going to be displayed in the tab. And you can change this little welcome note. Hit Run. And as you can see, the title and the tab changed, and my little welcome note changed. Now let's see if we can add a blog. So to add a blog, we're going to go over here to Contents. We're going to get the blog.cshtml page. And as you can see, unlike with the empty template, this page has a lot of functionality already built into it. So much so that the only thing that you need to do to display a blog is to supply it with a blog address. So I'm going to give it this address. I'm going to go to Run. And there you go, the blog is now displayed. So now let's see if we can get a Twitter feed to display. It's pretty much the same. We're going to go to Content, Twitter page, and all we need to do is supply it with a Twitter screen name because all the functionality required to go out and grab the feed is already pre-coded pre onto the page. Go to Run, Twitter, and there the, the tweet appears. Now, let's see if we can add some photos. Now, once again, here's the functionality. Now, this is a little different. Because they're using the Flickr helper, we're going to need a Flickr key and a Flickr username. So, I have a username. and I have a Flickr key. I'm going to go to run again and let's see if my photo appears. Yeah, my Flickr photos. I don't have any photo photos. Okay.
settle. Let's see. I think I put in the wrong flicker name. There we go. Let's try it again. And there you go. There's the photo. So next, let's say you want to add a page to this website. Come over to Content. Come over to File. New File. And it gives you the option of using any of these um, suggested types. We're going to use the CSHTML type because that's what all the other files on this uh, template is using. So we're going to name it. And you want to make sure that you put an underscore before the name. That way it ensures that the page can only be accessed from your home page. Okay, so now you want to put a little something in onto the page. Add some text. Okay. Now, before you can see the page displayed on your website, you're going to have to add it. So we're going to go to the App Starts page, and we're going to have to add a line here for the new page. So the easiest way to do that is just copy and paste the previous page, and make some corrections. So we're going to call this page New Page. And this is what's going to be displayed on the screen. And now we're going to come right here and make sure we put the name of the page so the compiler knows where to go grab the information from. Okay, make sure you come up here and add a comma after the photos line. Because as you can see, each line requires a comma except for the last line. You go to run. and the new page is displayed. Okay. So that's about it as far as changing and adding stuff to the personal site template. Now let's say you're finished and you're ready to publish your site. To do that you come over here to publish. Now it gives you an option, two options actually. If you already have a hosted website or if you need a hosting website. If you already have one, you can click here and import all the information from your provider's control panel. However, if you want to manually enter it, you can click here and if you have all the information, you can man manually enter it, hit validate, and it will um, publish the site. However, if you don't have a hosting site, Windows if you click here, Windows will give you options of different hosting sites that you can use. So as you can see here, there are several different hosting sites that they um, go out and find for you. And you can choose any one of these sites. Just follow the directions and you should be able to host and publish your site. Well, that's about it. This was just a brief tutorial of Web Matrix, just so you can get an understanding of how easy it is to use and get a feel for it. I hope you I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you and have a good day.